Uh, what a wonderful thing that we is. We can get to it in moments if we can't think of it. <laughs> there, is, there is a huge, yeah, right here. Right there here, right here. Huge, <laughs> huge amount of information out there, and, um, and that has been truly um, uh, life-saving. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, it's so much easier now, and it's, and it's truly more acceptable now. Right. Um, I, a, a friend of mine suggested that... Um, that uh, we should be grateful to those that went before us, and I agree. Um, Absolutely. Because they've, uh, the, for what they've done and, and being in the public eye, they've, uh, they've made the targets on our backs just a little bit smaller. And, yep. Uh, and I think society is beginning to actually, to some degree, accept us. Um, the, it, it's, uh, it takes a couple decades to, for society to actually get used to something new and I think uh, transgender and transsexualism has only been out there for a decade or so in the public eye. But well, it's definitely getting more and more known. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day, too. But, I mean, some of it we do, I, to an extent, ourselves. We, um, we hide, uh, and, and obviously we, we've, right. we've had to in some instances. But if we work really hard, we can sort of, you know, go stuff. Mm -hmm. The problem with going stealth is no one sees you, no one has to deal with it, right? <laughs> right. Until you, you pop your head up and say, hey, I'm here. Um, so you sort of have to go out, or someone has to go out and say, hey, yeah. I'm here, and it's, it's okay. So. Yeah. When you, look at the, um, when you look at the images in the media and you look at the characters on sitcoms and dramas and stuff like that, um, you frequently find the show's writers start writing in gay or transgendered characters nowadays, which they, they weren't maybe on pay-per-view, but um, five, ten years ago. Right. And that's very encouraging. The next step will be to get them to write in non-comical transgender right. characters. Right, exactly. Okay. Good evening, this is NLC Trans. You're on the air. Yes, I'd like to know, uh, during uh, the work day, and uh, assuming that you all have jobs. Yes. Yep. And do you go to work dressed and, and with makeup on and as a female? Oh, yeah. Or yes. do you present yourself as a man? Um, I mean, is this uh, 24 hours a day that you present yourself as women? or? As a matter of fact, that's one of the requirements in order to proceed with the treatment is that you must live in the role of your desired gender 24 hours a day. And yes. we are all um, full time yes. as as female. Yeah. Um, Certainly, there's a period of time when someone's um, getting up the courage to come out publicly, come out to their family, their friends, and work that that they're not obviously dressed in public in their desired gender, right. Um, right. In, in their correct gender. But um, when you do eventually come out and you start treatment, that that is one of the very rapid uh, goals. Is um, if, 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 if this is right, then, then you need to live your life that way 24-7. Right. That's Does right. Does it create a problem at work uh, with, you know, your fellow employees and your uh, boss? Uh, uh, you know, uh, do you have a problem with people being accepting of, of this, or are you finding, you know, difficulty with it? Well, and I, also, I, I guess one of the questions I have is if you, let's say, have a position as a male and then you've come out as a female what's the reaction if this is what has happened and, and if it's all right I'd like to hang up and listen to your answers okay sure. okay well thank you for calling thank you well, I mean as far as the workplace goes um, for me and I think all all three of us it was it was a really good experience um, both yes. my the company I work for was very supportive um, my site director, the director of the labs I work in, wanted to make sure that I um, felt appreciated and respected and valued. And um, everyone really, um, but I work with a bunch of biologists, so people were more curious than anything. Um, everyone was really accepting for me. Yeah. And, and that's pretty much the same experience I had. My company was very, very good about this. And, uh, and everybody I work for has, um, or work with has um, been very good about uh, my transition and very supportive. 
and, um, and it's actually been a good experience. Um, I, I know that's not necessarily always the case. Some people have very bad experiences, but um, for myself, I had a very good one, and, um, and my company accepted that very well. Yeah. And uh, my fellow employees have been very good to me, and they, they like me. So, <laughs> um, Yeah, that, that was my experience as well. Um, my immediate management was, was very supportive. Um, my, most of my employees, while, um, co-workers, excuse me, um, while it was certainly a, uh, a shock and a surprise and something for that they had to take some time to work through themselves, um, for, for they've all been very good. They've all been very supportive. Um, anybody that, that, that hasn't been, um, you don't really know about, you don't really hear about. They, they tend to just sort of drift off and, and you lose contact with them. Um, I think we actually have to uh, credit the women's movement to, to a degree for this because yeah. um, when you ask about having a job as a male and then transitioning to a female and how it affects your, your work environment and your job environment, um, thankfully there has been a lot of push in the women's movement for, you know, e equal pay and we all know it's not there yet but um, thankfully that they, they have been doing that as well so most jobs the gender is really irrelevant um, and if your management realizes that then from a business standpoint this isn't really a big deal mm. indeed um, yeah I think I'm ho ho hopeful that, um, that for the most part um, the sort of employer um, employee relationship with this is getting better. So, well, right. I mean, certainly the the Supreme Court of the state of Connecticut has um, ruled that transsexuals are protected under existing um, sex discrimination sex. laws. Right. Mm -hmm. The um, lost the thought. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> it happens to me um, all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So it's um, it, you know things are getting better out there. I think um, you know, but but there, we still do hear a lot of scare stories, um, and we certainly know people that have lost their jobs because of this. Fortunately, that didn't happen to any of us, right. but it does happen, it and does. it's it's a scary thing. And there are and and to be fair, the three of us have jobs that have significant training behind them. Right. So it's not an easy job to replace. For folks that don't necessarily have our education level, when, they're, when, when you're working um, more minimum wage style jobs, it's a lot easier to lose your job um, because management may not approve of what you're doing. Right. And that's certainly true. But, but we have been fortunate. Anyway. <laughs> Back to the agenda. Back to the agenda. <laughs> um, so. You know, hopefully um, we can uh, we can educate um, everybody out there a little bit. We are certainly not psychiatrists or psychologists, and don't pretend to be. And uh, and you know, I'm sorry if we've upset anybody out there um, with our views. Um, but but um, but we don't uh, we don't make any bones about who we are. Um, and anybody that uh, you know wants to come on and argue with us, uh, <laughs> we're here. You can come on down and be on our show. Um, we'll certainly talk to you. But, um, but we are hopeful that we can do some good things with our organization. We, um, we uh, are still a very new organization. I mean, God, we're less than a year old at this point. <laughs> right. But we have uh, we've made great strides. And, um, to have grown as much as we have just since January is, yeah. I think, amazing. It's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. Yeah, I think we've been kind of surprised at, uh, at the number of, um, of people like us that are out there right. and that are looking for support right. and, um, and looking just for somebody to talk to, right. um, which was a, a really wonderful thing for me, to just to have a group right. of people that sort of understood. Right. Um, because it, it's, you know, people can be very understanding and loving and, um, and supportive of you, but, but the fact of the matter is that the only people out there that really understand what you're going through is somebody else that's going through it. And so this has been a, a very good experience for me to be connected with, um, with all of uh, the people in this organization. Right. And, um, and it's, it's been a very, very positive thing, and I'm grateful for that. And, and self-acceptance is a huge part of this. You have to get over your own stigmatization of, uh, of, your, of your feelings. And I know for myself a big part of that was getting involved in this group, meeting other people that were dealing with a lot of the same issues I was dealing with. Um, it, 
it, it, it drives the point home that, that, you know, you don't have to choose to live the rest of your life as a miserable man.